report in progress. Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 for Wednesday, October 18th, 2023. Every time I believe that I think that I have the count figured out, the market decides that really I don't. And they put in a very strange pattern and they go beyond points where I feel that the current configuration should not go. But as Elliot has taught me over my many years, just keep working it, just keep looking at it, just keep figuring out what is what and what your what the possibilities are. So in doing that, I took into consideration really what kind of was going on behind and, and where a lot of that was coming from. And today we saw as one commenter and, and God bless you because uh, and I believe your first name is Colby and Colby, it was like amazing because I, re I read your comment and I actually started to chuckle because it's like, I, so understood exactly what you were saying and that he was attempting to trade off of a five minute chart and make head and head nor tails of what was going on. I was just like tossing it up in the air going like I give up and I get it. And it really was like that. Now what truly was behind a lot of this today was Seriously, I, I, I'm going to say negative news, but just, you know, bad news coming out of China in regard to NVIDIA. Well, that took that thing down. So there was no more of this driving it lower and then somebody running back in and running it up. And then we had a little bit of a play in Apple where they ran it up, they ran it down. And then we had different plays in different areas of the market today where Meta decided to give it up today. Microsoft initially running itself higher based on high... Uh, game sales so it's like hmm, okay and then deciding well maybe that really was going to contribute all that much who knows but regardless of of really what kind of was pushing it around what truly was in play today and where it affects the nasdaq is in the queues the queues have zero dte options so they have an options line or just you know a series that expires every day monday through friday and then plus we get our you know the quarterlies and and the monthlies etc cetera, etc cetera. so in other words it's like it it gets to be a little bit crazy and so if you follow basically the spx the es the spiders etc they also again they also all have zero DTE options. Well, those option flows, those order flows that, that pulled this market, where we saw these sudden bursts, for example, this morning on the opening, boom, run it up. I was like, what are they going after today? And it really didn't seem like anything in particular. They just they just took it. And then the next thing you know, they gave it the good old slam dunk. And so there were different periods in the day where just out of the blue, the market would suddenly go surge or nosedive. And those were due to the to the zero DTE flows where you know, they're coming in and it's getting hedged. The gamma flows, so the flows of positions. And that's really what kind of created a very unusual situation today. Then later in the day, as we got you know, negative flow, negative flow, negative flow, and the market just continued to walk itself lower, it started to break below levels that I would associate with the particular pattern that I felt was in intact. And because remember, I think as I was coming in today that I really was continue to move higher and finish a C wave. Well, that didn't work. You know, suddenly it's like, nope, we're nosediving. We're, we're going down, we're falling, we're just tripping, we're going overhead or heel. And today we had, I think, home sales. I believe. Let me just double check. But something that the market decided it didn't like. And that would have been housing starts and building permits. 
And that just, nope, sorry, I'm not going to like it. Boom. And then late in the day, we had a New York Fed president uh, speaking. And then at 2 p.m. Eastern, we got the Fed base book. Now, that all combined just kind of sent things a little bit tossed and turned. Now, back to the NASDAQ. Then after the close, we Netflix reported and Tesla reported. Tesla, Matt, even though the stock was higher from where it closed and continues to move higher from where it closed, <laughs> the earnings were not good. Now, and then we had Netflix, which because they raised their prices and they increased their subscriber base, is basically going to be up $43 tomorrow morning or $47, you know, 44. Wherever, wherever this ends up, it's going to be over $40 higher when it reopens tomorrow. Because right now, close to $346, trading at $390. Combine that, you would think that, well, the market should really just be picking up and moving much higher than closing lower than you know, in the after hours, closing lower than where it did at the regular session close. Regular session, the market reached a low today, 14979 Then it rose up to 15061 to close, normal regular session. After session, ended up finishing up at, at uh, 15000 um, actually 15, 15061 Excuse me, that was the uh, after hours close. The one o'clock close, I'd have to go back and look. But you would suspect that, that we really would be pulling this thing higher. But with the Dow down 331, with the S&P down 54, it, it, was, it was an amazing kind of a day. Contra to what I actually was looking for. So I took a look. I still believe that we are in a minor wave two that still should have additional upside before all is said and done. So I had to go figure, it's like, well, if this did not complete that wave two, because this is not what I would consider the start of a, of a third wave, and not just a third wave, it would be minor three of intermediate three. And with inside of it, it would be minute three of minor three of intermediate three. That's what all is kind of, kind of should become tumbling down. And it's not. This is very disjointed. This is more a three, a three. And God knows what that's going to be. Even when I take it down and I just put it onto a line chart, it's still right? Five, I can probably do five down to here, three, one, two, three. So is it going to work out that, that my original estimation is actually going to be in? So and I'm just talking count with you today, folks. So because I need to come in every day and kind of say, okay, what, what really is the market attempting to do? When I take it to a line close, so a closing basis, so instead of it including all of the extremes that the market tends to do in a five minute or, a t or an hourly chart, it takes it all out and only puts a close. So is this then one, two, three, four, five, that's a one, ABC, that's a two, and now we're working on a third, a just a, a small, because then, then, then it could fit a little bit more, it could fit a little bit cleaner that we're getting that point of recognition, right? And that point of recognition is going to come within the minute third of the minor third of the intermediate third. So that's how Elliot kind of stacks up and works. Now, if that's the case, I don't care what Netflix does tomorrow. It's, it's likely going to get smacked along with everything else because the market should go down. Oh, and by the way, for those of you who may not are, are not, you know, true market historians type stuff, I was I was there 
1987. So October the 19th, 1987 was the great crash. I mean, the, it, it, and we were, if you were there, it was an amazing day. The Dow was only down 570 points. And trust me, we have done way more than that since that time. But from where it started to where it finished, it was like, wow, it really felt like the world was coming to an end on that particular day. Well, that anniversary is tomorrow. Is the market going to give us a little, you know, like, okay, let's just do a little anniversary, whatever. I don't know. I'm not seriously, seriously, I'm not necessarily expecting that, but I just want to toss that in there because what's kind of happening now is like, well, I really was expecting you to go up and you didn't. And you just decided upwards not going to happen. The Dow did a really just kick itself in the teeth. The Russell yesterday leading the pack higher. Leading the pack higher, not going down when they smashed the NASDAQ and the S&P early on. Russell maintained up and then continued to go up and finished today, I think, above 25, up, up more than 25. Well, today it's down 39. Okay, well, what was that all about, Russell? What was yesterday that everybody had to have? You know, mid-cap stocks. There was this big switch and move back into mid-cap stocks. Again. Why things are happening is is unclear, but I can't really be concerned about who's buying what and why they're buying it, because my interpretation is like, what is the wave pattern telling me? The overall wave pattern in terms of what I'm working with continues to suggest that we are in a downtrend, right? If I'm considering that we are in a downtrend from the highs of January of 2022. And from within that, we have completed primary wave A and primary wave B of a larger into a cycle degree A wave down. So primary wave A was down, primary wave B was up, and it completed right there. So that puts us in a primary C wave down of which will comp be comprised of five waves of intermediate degree, of which, by estimation, are intermediate one and two are complete. Now, a lot of people are coming at me, and I got it. I got it. If we had to go only to there, this is three waves. I have them coming at me, telling me that they, they, they see a triangle formation. And I'm like, well... I don't know if I actually see it in the triangle formation. And they're counting this as an ABC. And I get that. I really do. But in my estimation, it's one, two, all the way up to here, I can give it. And then one, two, three, four, five. So it's it's it can be a three, but it's like one, two, three, one, two, one, two three, four, so one, two, three, four, and the five, minor. This was pretty clean five, just, just jamming it all the way down. So I do feel that this was five waves. I do feel, obviously, this is, just looking at it, it's three waves up. And this, this again, was a five-wave structure down. So we have one, two, three, four, and then we get another. This was a diagonal coming into finish here. And so similar to kind of this, it wasn't necessarily diagonal, it was just very steep and how it went down. So I, I'm still fairly satisfied with how I've counted this out. So here we have intermediate one, two, minor one, looking for completion of minor two. Well, if we come in tomorrow and, you know, overnight, they decide they're just going to take this down and it comes in below, believe me, you know, that would be a, that would be a pretty steep drop earnings or not. You know, I, I we it just constantly say, like you're thinking, oh, can't, it can't go down. It's like, that's when it'll happen. So if, if it starts to sail, what's going to conclude that I get to move that two back down to here as I originally had it? It what's gonna what is it gonna have to break? 
Well, obviously, if, if you're trying to count this as a one, two, three, and this is a four, well, that's out because it dipped too far today. So that one's out. So is it, what is it? Is it an, a one, two? What's this then? Again, when you take that out, see what it looks like? One, two, one, two, working on a three, a four, a five. One, two, three, four, five, which could be the first minute wave one of minor wave three. These are the possibilities. Right now, though, because I've got to do to what did it do today? And I'm going to leave it where I have it, partially because this was a bizarro bar. And this was this morning. This was this morning. What they had to have on the opening. I'm going to bring it all the way down. Let's let's just take this down to a 15-minute chart. Take a look at it. There it is. Had to have. And a lot of it was Microsoft. And then, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Well, we need to have it again. Here was another flow. No, yes, no, big flow, no. Do you see the flows? Those were the flows that were coming in. And I'm telling you about the zero DTE, the flows. Sell them, gamma had to sell, gamma movement had to buy, sell it, buy it, sell it, buy it, sell it. Into the and then the, after the bell, so they bought it back up. But this was the opening. Now, if we take even that down to a line chart, it still is a big move. But we take a lot of the fluff comes out of it. It was at fifteen thousand eighty at. 15 minutes after the opening. So the initial opening was like, Bruh! and then they just turned it, ran it. I'm like, okay, there, we're finally going to go and finish up and get the C wave in. So I was putting the B there. Now we got the C and it didn't work. Then they just worked their way and came down, breaking that low plus. So, Again, strange, bizarre day. Now, how do you want to trade that? Well, again, my, my position is a little bit different because I am a day trader. So again, I used to trade options. I was an options market maker for many years and I carried positions. But as an options trader, you hedge. I can pair things off. I can protect a position. I can add puts. I can add calls. I can wait them out and then have an overall directional bias, but not get killed in the process. If I'm just long or short a stock or an index, you can get killed days like today. Because you're trying to trade it and you're like, oh my God, look what they just did. They ran it from 15,080 to back above 15,200 in 15 minutes. Like, what? Get around and knocked it all the way back down. And then spent the rest of the day just lolling around, but definitely down, 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 and down. So, Here's the best estimate I got, folks, that we still A, B of the minor two. The alternate is going to be that the minor two is done. And as I showed you on the line chart, what we got is one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two. Again, then it gets ugly. So it just becomes, I, even when I take it out and I look at it on that four-hour chart, it becomes a little bit different. One, two, one, two, three. So 
it, depending on what time frame you're looking at it. But it's not clean. And so when I'm looking for a third wave, it's I really do stick to what I tell you that I'm looking for to just kind of start to drop and not stop. But then it'll do that. But then suddenly it'll throw these big wrenches out there. And you're like, what was that? And then they'll just walk it. And my feeling is they're just they they don't even have these little blurbs in between. It just keeps going. Well, we're in an earnings season. So, you know, that's got something to say. So right now I am leaving it. But the alternate would be that that two moves down and this was the, the end, as I have previously marked. I just changed it today. Yesterday it was here. I'm changing it again to be try to be more reflective about what all of this mess is. But it will come back quickly. If I walk in tomorrow or even later checking it tonight, which I do, and it's putting in another nosedive, well, then two's over and the three is in place. I hate to say it that way because there's, there's many of you that are attempting to position. And I get that. I really do. This is not easy. And as I continue to say, there's so much going on around the market itself that effect could have an effect on these companies. So a lot of these earnings reports that were put out today, folks, began to show what we have been warned about. Lamb Research. Those earnings weren't bad. And actually, the guidance was like, they intend to continue to make money, but they took the stock lower. Because it's like, well, I don't see how, or, you know, there, there's something out there that is switching this whole tone. Netflix, on the outside of all that right now. Tesla, a little bit on the outside, but Tesla was trading lower. And then, you know, they then they just perked it up, as I showed you. But who knows? Tesla's so volatile that it could be trading at 2.30 tomorrow morning. Who knows? So, again, we're not seeing this usual pattern of, oh, you blew the doors off and they just run it. They just run it. They just run it. So I think what could be status quo is changing very possibly. Interest rates, did we happen to notice what the bond market did today? Bond market was down again this morning. It nosedived. It did another nose, uh, did another header. Now, granted, and I go with you, granted, this is actually, and in my opinion, the bond market is kind of getting very close, but a treasury market are getting very close to reaching a price low, so a futures low, but a yield high. Now, I'm not expecting it just to roll over, boom, and just, you know, interest rates are going to start getting cut and everything's going to be grand and glorious. That's not going to happen. Inflation is still a problem. So, but I am looking for a little bit of a turn there. Now, what that does for the market, I mean, it could spell a couple of things. We got everybody still kind of with that, hey, we got a recession. Hey, we got this. And then we got the camp going like, impossible, never going to happen. And we have another camp going like like the big the big banks, Jamie Dimon for one, saying that are you ready? Are you really prepared for five and a half, six percent interest? And then we see different things kind of uptick. Anyway, this is supposed to just be technical, but and I apologize. But there's a lot of things that are kind of going coming, going, and affecting what we're doing each day. So what I'm looking at. I would, I'm looking for the market to now to continue and finish up on a C wave. But that being the case, here's your markers. 15,524 is 0.618, where C would be 0.618 of A. That's not the most common, but it works. Because in this case, I would consider it complete because A, the C wave would come up and put a new high in above A, that I like to see. And where the most common would be equivalent 
is above where wave one started so that invalidates the count. So coming in between, that is the most likely target. And we hadn't even trouble just getting back above 15,300. We got up there. Yesterday, actually. So, but, you know, not even close today. So again, that would be expectation. The alternate is that it continues to break down and then it will and should pick up speed. Our next price support comes in at 14,665, 14,588. And right there behind it is that low at 82. And then what do we have? We have fibs coming down, but I don't have them here. And what I would have to put in is something like this. If I'm going to mark that high where I have that A wave as the completion point for wave two, then you do that. So what do we got? 14,682, 14,195, 13,409. That is what a third wave has the potential to do. Not lull around. Not like la, 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 la. But maybe it's just taking its time and where it wants to kick in. New world. So I am going to take this off for right now because I don't want to confuse. And you just um, reverse the tape, put it back on, copy them down. Or do it yourself. There to there to their extensions, you're going to get your wave three. If indeed I move this back down, now let's go over to the S&P before, before I make this a dissertation. S&P, as confusing, as confusing. So again, same count. The way I'm looking at it is like I've got them put together into the same count. And so it's like, one, and now we got A, B, and we should do a C wave. This one even looks a little bit cleaner now, doesn't it? A, B, C. And popped up, uh, we're 43, 47. Off the low, came up 17. Not bad, not bad, not bad. In this case, if it's going to be a C wave, what are we looking at? C is 618, is 4451, and then we have 618, here at 4460 for this wave two. The minor wave two has resistance at 4459. The C wave has resistance at 4451. Now it could come full bore in the S&P. If they really want to catch fire and run this thing, then we have C equality to A at 4525. Underneath of that, we have minor at 0 0.786 at 45, uh, 2022, 20, 20, 20, 20, 45, 20. So 45, 20 to 45, 25, 44, 51 to 44, 60. Those are our zones. And that's kind of where I'd look for the C wave. I'm really not looking for a dynamic C wave. There's just too much stuff out there. They're not going to let it. Oh, let's take a peek at this, that, that daily. Um, I want to look at these moving averages. Do you see what we did today? We came right down to that daily 200 simple moving average. I mean, came down and gave it up. Yes. And, and then, well, not run, but it, it went back up. Where do we have the 20? The 20 is sitting at 4,354, 55. If it starts to come up and gets itself above there, we probably should get a little boost. We should get a little boost to its efforts. All right. Now, just let me just kind of, because I forgot to do it, let me just close up by saying, where is the NASDAQ? The NASDAQ came down and just kind of hovering. The 20 is sitting at 15,028. We got back above it. We got back above it. We dropped below it. We got back above it. It should provide some support to keep the rally going. All right, I'm going to just complete it right there.
Our next update will be on Thursday, October the 19th.